Arlene here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? It's so good to see you again and thank you so, so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to. And what I'm up to is my next installment in my 2000, my 19, where did that come from? My 2018 Happy Fall Y'all series. <laughs> I'm here today to do a little project for our powder room. And I'm not gonna show you the rest of the powder room until my home tour. But I did wanna show you this one little lantern centerpiece that I'm fixing to bake. I'm gonna do a funky bow topper for this. And this is another easy one, you guys. This is another craft that would be very good for the beginner crafter if you wanna try this one. I encourage you to. I'm going to be making a nine loop funky bow topper for this lantern. And I'm just gonna put one little thing around a candle inside and that's all it's gonna be. This is going to be an accent piece for on my sink in the powder room. So come along with me, I'm not gonna yammer on. <laughs> come along with me and we're gonna get started making a, this little plain little lantern into something special for fall. So started. Okie dokie, as I mentioned, I'm going to be using this lantern. So this is a fairly new little lantern made in China. I don't have any, I don't know how much it was. It wasn't all that expensive. I don't think it was, I think it was under $20 at and that or the Christmas tree shops. Anyway, it opens up at the top here like this which I kind of like. I really like this, especially when I do the lantern centerpieces. I can get into these a lot better. And what I've done here before I got on camera, I got to craft it and I was like, oh my goodness, I need to stop and put this on video. Everybody would probably like to see what I'm doing here <laughs> after I've had this made, you know? So what I did is I just took one of these. I got this from AC Moore. Y'all saw me haul this a couple weeks ago. And I just kind of cut it apart with my snippers and I just tied it together with a tie wrap every so often and I made myself a candle ring and just fluffed it up and, you know, kind of messed it up and, you know. So that's what I'm gonna use for my candle ring inside this lantern. And I'm gonna use one of these. This is a, I got this from Hobby Lobby and this is, was not a cheap little purchase, this, these candles. I got two of these from Hobby Lobby. It's got like a, I don't know whether you can probably, no, I'm not gonna be able to show you that. It's got like a, a bubble in there almost. And it makes it look like the, look it makes the flame look like it's moving so anyway I'm gonna snug all this down in to the bottom of this lantern let's see how well I do here how well I did it estimating the size of this candle ring might be not so wonderful huh all right let's put it in first <laughs> There we go, that looks pretty. Of course, it's gonna be sitting on the sink, so you're not gonna be able to see it in the back, but even if you could, it looks good. All right, so there we go. That's all I'm gonna do for the inside. And now I'm gonna make a funky bow. And I have another one of these, and I have the rest of the one I just cut up. So I'm gonna be adding some of these into the bow. And I do have some leaves and whatnot around here. I'm not sure how much of that I'll use. I have a couple of these three pumpkins. I'm not even sure I'll use these, but I just brought them out here just in case I wanted to add them to the bow. This is not gonna be an over the top, in your face, funky bow topper. It's just an accent piece, like I said. But I do wanna make a funky bow. So let's get started doing that. This is some of the ribbon I got from the Dollar Tree. Oops, this is. And I got this from At Home a while back. And I got this from Costco last year, last fall, not this fall, last fall. So I'm just gonna cut three strips of each ribbon at 20 inches long. 
again, like I said, this would be a great, this would be a great little craft for the beginner. Okay, three strips of each. So I'm gonna go ahead and dovetail the end. The way I do the dovetail is to fold it in half and start at the edge and cut up, being very careful to lift that back blade above my finger so I don't cut myself. I'll be careful if you do it this way. Most people do it this way. I don't even know whether I can do it this way. I'm gonna try. Do it this way and cut away from, from, their, from themselves like that. You have the same result either way. I've just always done it the way I show you to do it. So, but I hate the thought of one of you guys getting hurt. I may have to change my ways, huh? Teach this old dog new tricks? I don't know. this is an odd number loop bow this is a nine loop bow I'm going to switch directions each time I add a loop and the reason I made these 20 inches long is because I want five inch tails and a five inch loop so I need 10 inches just to make just to make the, uh, the loop. So you go to five and then five to 15 gives me 10 that I put together to make a five inch loop. And then I have another five inches for the other tail. So each loop, you have two tails. In effect, you just fold it in half like this. Go to your board and find yourself five inches or however big you wanna make your loop. You can make your loops bigger if you want. I like them at five inches. That's just the way I like to make them. Pinch it together at that point. Go to the back tail and twist that back tail forward just to get all your ribbon, or at least make an attempt to get all your ribbon going in the same direction. And here we go with the next color. And this time I'm gonna turn it and go the opposite direction. And every time I add a loop, I'm gonna turn it the opposite direction. up from center, center being my thumb. I always like to think of it that way. Think of my thumb as being center, the center of the bow, the middle of the bow. Okay, next time through the pattern, you're just gonna keep alternating up, pointing the loop part up and then the loop part down in the next one. And we'll go up. This is really nice ribbon from the Dollar Tree, you guys. I have to say. Dollar General. This is from Dollar General, not Dollar Tree. Dollar General. Sorry about that. And down. One more time through the pattern. Up. Twist. Down. And twist. One more. Grab me a pipe cleaner. And I'm gonna lay it beside my thumb and kind of grab it with my thumb and pull it around to the back. Just like that. 
Use the hand that you're holding the loops shut with as resistance. Pull against it with your other hand and twist. And then shake out that hand. Whew. All right, and then it's time to, I can hear you guys in unison. Fluff, 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 fluff. That one loop got a little long. That is the most important part. This part right here, the fluffing part, is the most important part, honest to goodness, of making any bow. And I know I harp on this all the time, but honest to goodness, it really does make a huge difference in the way a bow looks if you just take some time to just fluff. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do before I continue on here. I'm going to go ahead and tie that other ribbon into the back of this bow when I find my other, there it is, plaid loop. And I'm going to go ahead and tie this on the lantern, and then I'm going to just really fluff it out there before I start making the topper. So here's this long piece of ribbon that I got, and I'm going to turn my bow over, and then I'm going to snug this ribbon right side down, by the middle of it, right side down into the pipe cleaner. And then this long piece of ribbon is going to help me tie this bow nice and tightly and securely on to the back of this lantern. I'm gonna cut this down just a smidge. Okay, and of course, that's why I didn't want to fluff because I knew I'd be smushing it. All right, I'll bring my lantern over here. And I am just going to put it around this part of it. I hate to even to cover this up, but I wanted to do a funky bow topper, an easy one for you guys. And I think this will look pretty, definitely, with a funky bow topper on it. Anyway, I'm gonna put this around. That little space there and just smush it up in the sides it doesn't have to be perfect now I'm going to bring this over here so you guys can watch me do this y'all have asked me to show you how I do my square bows and as you can see here are the two strips I put the left strip over the right strip and tuck it under and tie just like you're tying a shoe I'm gonna pull it really tight as tight as you can because you're gonna be manipulating that bow and you want, don't want that bow moving around on you when you're trying to put stuff in it, you know? Really tight. And then take your left again and make a loop and take your right strip over the left. And then because this is one-sided ribbon, I need to twist this before I put the loop through and pull the loop through. And because I twisted it, it's coming through on the right side. And then just make your bow pretty. You now again, this is the back. So, but I still like to make it somewhat pretty. One of these days, I'll make a bow topper for the front and the back. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now that would be some work but maybe one of these days, not today. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and dovetail right to about the edge there. There we go. Pretty little bow in the back. Okay, now I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna do some fluffing. And then we're gonna stick some stuff in this just to accent it a little bit. Remember how when I said uh, I want you to do a, the lantern centerpiece, that challenge is coming up in a couple of weeks here? And I ask you to do something with your bow. This is a good example of something, you know, one example of one thing that I do to my bows. It's just, Add a little something, something, you know? Alrighty. Now, that 
It's looking pretty good. And I like the tails that length. They're not flouncing all over the place, but they're a nice little accent. And some of them are coming up into the bow, which is good. Okay, now, let's see, I've got leaves. I've got some of these pit berries, or these, they're not pit berries, they're berries. So I think I might use some of these first and see what I can do with some of these. Although I want to cut them in a, they tend to fall apart really easily. Let's see if I can cut them below where they're kind of tied together there. it over a little bit that's better all right I have my glue gun here so I'm gonna put a plop of blue glue right there right where I want to put this plop it in there and be patient and hold it there for a second okay if there's a will you guys there's a way to make it work longer than I want it to be. This I'm going to have to put some glue on this. I just put some glue on the edge end of it there. Snuck it up in there. And be patient. I'm going to pull out the burgundy more than the orange, although there's plenty of orange there. I could do a little bit of all. Let's see here. Not sure I'm gonna to put too much more than that on it, folks. To be honest. I do need to put some glue on that, don't I? When 
You hungry, Miss Gracie? Look at her. <laughs> she says, I'm sitting on the rug because I slip on the floor, but I'm waiting for Dad to get me my supper. <laughs> She's so cute. Folding it. And again, I have to be patient. Sam is still laying in the in the dining room. He's like, I hear that can opening. Try to see if you can see him over there. I don't think you can. You gonna get your supper, buddy? Is it time for supper? Huh? Yeah. What time it is? You go for it. You gonna come get your supper? There he goes. Okay, Mr. Excited. <laughs> One more of these, I think. going to be it you guys of course I'll have to wait till it dries and tweak around it a little bit you know and fluff this bow around all the stuff but how easy is this you guys it really and truly is not hard you guys can do it all right I'll be right back with some final words after I get this whole thing fluffed out too okie dokie everyone I'm back and I did some more tweaking, not a lot. I just spread out the pip berries and kind of made it look like, you know, it went all the way around the bow. And I just tweaked the ribbons a little bit more and just poked and prodded at it a little bit. <laughs> I'm really happy with how this one worked out. You guys, this is just a sweet little bow topper lantern with a funky bow topper for my powder room. A little accent lantern, if you will. Just turned out really, really, really pretty. But as I said, I'm not gonna show you the rest of the decor in my powder room. You know, I need to leave a little bit of something as a surprise. I've got my whole ivy table done here. I'm not gonna show you that either. <laughs> until my home tour. I didn't do any crafts for over there. I just set stuff, you know, on the table. So there's no funky bows or anything over there. So no big surprise there. <laughs> but anyway, while I'm looking at you here, let me just say, I hope that all is well with everyone. And I hope you guys don't tire of me saying this because I've kind of adopted saying this in all of my videos just because it, it was laid on my heart I don't know a couple months ago I guess to just to acknowledge that there are folks out there who are struggling and suffering with catastrophic illnesses and chronic pain and they struggle you know you all struggle if you're out there and listening to me every single day and I wanted to acknowledge that I do think about you and I do say prayers for you and I hope that just that little bit helps your day be a little bit better. I hope that there's someone there with you helping you get through each day, making the best of each day, the best that you can out of each day. I hope that there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts, pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or where it should be. And remember, in crafting, there are no mistakes, only unique creations. Hugs all around. I love y'all to bits, to bits, to bits. And I'll just say until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.